Hello and welcome to the Knowledge Catalog General Chemistry for Grade 9. And so this is still another, you know, this is another video lesson that tackles uh, different topics. Uh, it has discussion and activity and another discussion. And uh, it is part of the series in explaining uh, the formation of ionic and covalent bonds. So um, you will need a copy of the learner's module for Science 9 in Unit 2, Module 2, pages 28 to 31. So that's my reference. And so, as usual, this is divided into three parts. And if you are a teacher in the Philippines and you want to have a copy of this presentation, you can always message me through my um, Facebook account. And the, the link is in the description. And so, uh, before we continue, you may actually subscribe to this um, channel and like this video uh, if you liked it by the end of the uh, of watching it. Okay, so, yeah, let's begin. Um, this is a three-part uh, no, three session. It begins with a discussion on computing the number of bonds. So by saying bonds, uh, we were actually in the process of talking about uh, chemical bonding. So ngayon, ang pag-uusapan natin is uh, what if um, elements or a group of elements or uh, among elements, there's sharing of electrons. Okay, there is bonding. Now, how many bonds will there be? And so, for uh, no, for example, in carbon dioxide, that, that carbon dioxide, that's CO two. Step one is to get the total available valence electrons or TAVE, or TAVE in carbon dioxide. So how do we do that? First is um, we take note that there is only one carbon atom in carbon dioxide, and there's uh, there are two oxygen atoms, and each carbon atom has four valence electrons. So um, by now, you're supposed to know that uh, this is uh, not correct and you're supposed to also know how to arrive with this kind of conclusion. Okay, in the previous video, I taught you how are you going to get the Lewis uh, symbol for carbon and it's supposed to have four dots in it because it has four valence electrons. Whereas oxygen has six valence electrons again because it has six dots around it. Yeah, so. Ayan, those are, two, are the things that you need to remember. So how many um, atoms of carbon are there in the, in the compound and uh, how many valence electrons are they supposed to have? Because you're computing for the total available valence electrons. Ayan, so uh, the next step is for to, to compute uh, for TAVE. So you have to multiply the number of atoms for the, for the element and the number of valence electrons it's supposed to have. Okay, so for carbon at for one carbon atom, there are supposed to be four valence electrons each, four valence electrons. So that's supposed to be pluralized. Ayan. So that was two uh, oxygen atoms multiplied by six valence electrons each. Uh, you have to uh, to add the uh, products of these two, and then you're going to get four plus twelve, and you'll get uh, sixteen as your TAVE, the total available valence. Electrons. So that is all in all the total available valence electrons uh, for carbon dioxide. Step one, palang yan. Okay. Now for step two, uh, actually I suggest uh, you, I uh, know, you go ahead and think of your own um, some kind of ano, some kind of um, compound. Para meron kayong para original example na kayo naman ang mag-iisip. Say for instance, CH4. Pwede yun. I just uh, take it. Right, how about you? While we're working on carbon dioxide, you're going to work on uh, met on methane, the me oh, methane, methane CH four. Now, step number two. Okay, for ano uh, again for uh, carbon dioxide, you have to compute for the octet rule requirement for carbon dioxide. So uh, ORR yung ano ko dyan, yung acronym ko dyan. You have to compute for the octet rule requirement. Yung available na valence electrons sa na compute natin. Pero kailangan din natin i-compute kung ilan ba dapat talaga yung valence electrons sila para maging stable sila. Maging stable ang mga um, ang mga atoms na bumubuo sa carbon dioxide. Bawa. Uh, yung unang question kanina is ilan yung available available na atoms ang mayroon ng carbon dioxide. Ang question naman na sasagutin natin ngayon is uh, ilan ba dapat yung um, electrons na makakapagpa-stable sa carbon at saka sa oxygen. So, uh, for carbon and oxygen, para maging stable sila, kailangan nila pareho ng walong valence electrons. Okay? Uh, the, each of them must have eight valence electrons. Okay? So, now, how do we solve for the octet rule requirement for carbon, for carbon dioxide as a compound? So, you multiply uh, the number of atoms uh, for ano, of an element in the compound. In carbon, meron lang siyang isa. In oxygen, mer meron dalawa. And then you multiply these values uh, with, the, um, with the valence electron requirement uh, for them to be stable. In the case of carbon and uh, 
oxygen, it's supposed to be 8. So that's like 1 times 8 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16. You add them up, you'll get 24. And so you have two values now. You have Tave and you have OR, okay, double R. Now, what's the last step? Hi, so the last step is you need to get the difference of ORR and TAVE respectively. So in that order, you're going to get their difference. So ima minus mo yung TAVE dun sa ORR and you're going to divide it by 2. Okay, so in this case, 8, uh, which is the, you know, uh, which is the uh, difference of 24 and 16, uh, you will be dividing it by 2, you get 4. Okay, therefore, there will be four bonds surrounding a carbon atom as shown in the following Lewis structure. So, um, the number of bonds present here are 1, 2, 3, 4. Ayan. So, yun yung sinasabi niya. There are two bonds. Uh, there are four bonds present. Each bond, anyway, is comprised of uh, two valence electrons. One bond, two valence electrons. And so, you have to do this the following. Do Just do this, this thing, okay? Uh, these steps. Follow these steps in the following activity, the next activity. And it's entitled activity number four. Activity number four is entitled uh, bonding by sharing of electrons. And it has the following objectives. Okay, so first, uh, that part you would be able to explain how covalent bonding takes place. And the second one is you would be a, you should be able to illustrate the sharing of electrons. Also, the materials that you will be needing for this are the following. So pencil and the periodic table. And so, um, uh, we, this is this, this is going to be the process. You just have to complete the following table. Again, medyo marami siya. Okay, uh, these are the compounds that you need to solve for. Uh, you can actually surf the net uh, for these or just simply look at your periodic tables kasi meron mga available naman dyan. Okay, para makalaman nyo kung yung chemical formula niya. Okay, so the first one is ammonia followed by a water, by water, Hydrogen chloride, serine gas, oxygen gas, methane, hydrogen gas, phosphine, sulfur dioxide, and chlorine gas. So you just have to fill them in with their uh, no, with correct uh, chemical formula, with uh, their correct Lewis structures, and the types of bonds uh, that they are supposed to uh, no, that they have. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to finish this uh, table. Uh, if you need more time, you can pause this video. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready to uh, check your work, to, to answer the following questions. I'm so sorry. Okay. To, check, to uh, answer the following questions. The first question is, how do covalent bonds form between atoms? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready for the next uh, question. Question number two. What kind of element usually forms covalent bond? Is it possible for metals and nonmetals to form nonpolar covalent bond? Why? How about polar covalent bond? Why? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready for the next question. Question number three. Why is it that diatomic molecules always form nonpolar covalent bonds? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready to answer the next, the next question. I'm excited about the answers. So question number four. Differentiate polar covalent bond from nonpolar covalent bond. Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready to answer uh, this activity. Okay. So these are all the answers to the activity. Okay. So for ammonia, we have NH3. And then this is the Lewis structure and its bond is polar covalent. And you can just observe that for, for the rest of them, okay, ganun yung bonding. You can actually represent the bonding through lines. Pwede rin namang pag, pagtabihin nyo na lang yung mga... Ano, yung mga Tawag doon yung mga electrons, okay, para may pakita yung bonding. Also, these are stains coming from the, ano, from the science learner's module. I mean, uh, from the science uh, learner's module's teacher's guide. Kaya medyo meron siyang mga letters dyan. And these are the types of bonds that will be formed 
for each of these um of these compounds are that are present okay, in these compounds. So the answer to question number one is uh, covalent bonds form between atoms due to the sharing of electrons. Um, sharing of electrons is uh, covalent bonding. It can only be like uh, polar covalent or non-polar covalent. Pero there will be not, uh, no, there will not be, tama ba grammar ko? <laughs> there will never be a transfer of electrons kapag covalent bonding pinag usapan natin. Okay, so before we continue, what kind of bonding is that kapag merong sharing, pag, pag merong transfer of electrons? What kind of, what kind of bonding is that? Okay, it's ionic bonding. Yeah. So we move on to the answer to question number two. Okay, so the kind of what kind of element usually forms covalent bond? Is it possible for metals and non-metals to form non-polar covalent bond? Possibly kaya? Why? How about polar covalent bond? And why? So generally non-metals they form covalent bonds. However, um there are cases when may mga metals and non-metals na nakakapag form ng polar covalent bond. Pero it's impossible for a metal and a non-metal to form a non-polar covalent bond. So, when there are times when a metal is involved in covalent bonding, it will always be polar covalent bonding and never non-polar. Okay, so remember that. And of course, the other uh, way with which metals can bond is through ionic bonding. Na nun. Yeah. Okay, so the, question, the answer to question number three is... I, so anyway, the question is, why is it that diatomic molecules always form non-polar covalent bond? So do you know what diatomic molecules are? It's uh, like these, uh, itong F2, fluorine gas, oxygen gas. Okay, um, these are diatomic. Okay, so the same element na nakabind sa, sa, sa sarili niya because it can't ex exist like, you know, in nature as a unit. Like, kung oxygen lang siya, hindi siya mag-exist ng ganun. Okay, it has to be paired with itself. Okay. So yeah, diatomic molecules always form nonpolar covalent bonds because of the equal electronegativity values resulting to equal sharing of electrons. So, ayong siyempre, since parehong element lang naman yun, if you're going to get the electronegativity difference, it's going to be, it's going to result to this kind of sharing, equal sharing of electrons. Again, so the answer naman to the last question, differentiate a polar covalent bond from nonpolar covalent bond is Polar covalent bond involves an equal sharing of electrons. So, hindi sila pantay-pantay. While nonpolar covalent bond involves equal sharing of electrons. Again, so uh, that's it for the answers for uh, question uh, for this activity. I, we, we are now going to declare this finished. Again, so now we move on to the last part, which is a uh, discussion on the difference of ionic and covalent bonding. So this is a table and it has the following characteristics for covalent bonding. For covalent bonding, there is no complete transfer of electrons. There's only sharing of electrons. Uh, that is actually uh, not the case in ionic bonding. Okay, and then uh, for covalent bonding, always remember this. A pair, a pair of shared electrons results to one bond or is actually considered one bond. Okay, it usually, uh, ionic bonding naman usually happens between a metal and, non and a non-metal. So there are cases when a metal and a non-metal will bond to form a polar covalent bond. But again, never a non-polar covalent bond. Now, pagkatapos na makapag-share, ay makapag-transfer ng electrons sa ionic bonding, each element achieves a stable configuration and each of the elements are going to produce ions. Whereas in the case of covalent bonding naman, after the sharing, each atom receives a stable configuration. Yes, that's true. And the covalent compound is formed. Ang mga covalent compounds, they have, um, you, they have units called molecules. So one piece of a molecule can comprise a covalent compound. Ayan. So yun yung magiging result ng bonding nila, mga molecules. Ayan. So we're done with the discussion on uh, ionic and covalent bonding. So basically, uh, yun, yung mga, yun yung mga basic differences nila. Ayan. All right, so this is chemistry. This is still Sir Carlos, and uh, we were we were done uh, doing this session. Right? So it, it's divided. It was divided into three: a discussion, an activity, and another discussion. Um, we are not yet through with the learning competency number three. Okay, we're not yet through. So by with the next video, we're still going to talk about uh, the formation of ionic and covalent bonds. 
I, so I hope that you have already subscribed to this channel. Your support is uh, well appreciated. And again, if you want to have a copy of this presentation, again, uh, itong presenta presentation na ginamit ko for this uh, video lesson and for my other video lessons, you can always message me through my Facebook uh, account. Right, so I hope I'll be seeing you in the next uh, part of the series. Okay, ingat ka. Okay, so goodbye. See ya.